Kidoki. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is walk through a, a design solution for a dial plan. That's not what I meant to do. Let me get to the correct slide. And basically, we're just picking up where we left off. I ordinarily do this in that first presentation, but since we were shortened last time, we didn't get to it. <laughs> so what I'm giving you is kind of a, yeah, an idealized form of a dial plan. We're, we're going to do several of these kind of exercises because this is just this is one of those Mac things. You just you got to practice it, and you know it starts a few little get a feel for it sort of things. That I'm going to try to give you, but mainly you just need to do it some. So what we're going to do? We have a private network uh, has three sites: site A, site B, and site C. Very clever names. Um, have local phones at each site. We have trunk connections between those switches, and then we have trunk connections out to the PSTN. I want to walk through this fairly deliberately, um, looking at each of them. The basic path that you take to solving this sort of thing is first off, you design or identify, whichever way you prefer to say it, call types. And what I mean by call types is if I'm going to group if I'm going to route calls to a port, how do I group them as a family? So calls within this site, calls to a different site, that sort of thing, okay? Once we do that, we're going to create a number complete template. So in other words, we're going to build that part of the dial plan that tells the switch you've received enough information to make a call. Remember, that's the process. The switch receives digits. Once it receives enough digits that it matches one of the number complete templates, that's a complete number. And now I can make a routing decision on it. Okay. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to create accept rules. on each interface. And finally, we're going to create reject rules as necessary. Okay. On the sheets I've given you, we've got our dialing, we've got our dial requirements. So we're saying that between these sites on the private network, we want to be able to dock four digits and get to any of those phones. So if I'm, no matter where I'm sitting, I can dial four digits and make any other phone in the enterprise ring. I want to use nine as a steering digit, and that's a new term for you. A steering digit is a digit that I use internally to get to an interface, and then I delete that digit. I don't send it on to the next site. It's not actually part of the number except at my site. Okay. It steers it to a particular port. So we're going to use 9 as a steering digit to get to our LEC, uh, to any calls that have to go to LEC destinations. So anything that's not on our private local site, it's not on our private local network, but it's in our local area and I need to go through the LEC to get there. 1 is a steering digit for IXC destination, so basically anything not on our private network and that is not on our local uh, in our local area. What's steering digit is a digit that is used internally to route a call and then discarded. In other words, I don't send it to another site. Okay. 911 and 9911 route to the LEC immediately. Why do I want that? Why do I want to think about those in particular? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when are you going to dial 911? Let me draw you a picture. <laughs> With this process, what most switches will do, they'll wait for you to match one of these number complete. 
most devices, if you don't give it enough to match one of the templates, it'll wait a certain default time and then go ahead and try to route it. And a lot of times it can. You've messed up a template, you made it too long or something like that. But it'll match, for example, a seven digit number template oftentimes will match four digits. It just has to wait for this time out. Now let me draw you the picture. You're in your office late at night. A very tall, seven foot six guy with a big knife is walking straight towards you. You forgot to put in a template to route 911 immediately. So you dial and nothing happens. And the big guy is coming towards you. Okay, is that enough of an incentive to remember to put in the right template? 911 <laughs> and 9911 are important subjects. We're going to touch on them a little bit in here. Understand they are matters of law. They're matters of personal safety. You have to deal with them. We don't have enough scope in this class, so you do this working with somebody at your site. Fundamentally, what 911 does is call, is a LEC call, and it needs to get to your LEC carrier. Now, that's some, a bit of an oversimplification. There's way more under the hood. That's as far as I want to take it in here. It needs to go to the LEC. The danger in a network like this is you can real easily set it up so 911 calls from this site go to this LEC. Not going to do you any good. Okay. So that's why I throw that in there. The top phone at site A can't make long distance calls. And then each side is assigned a block of public numbers. These are analogous to public IPs. Okay. Uh, site A has 247-5100, excuse me, through 5199. Site B has 753-4220 through 4239. Site C has 489-4330 through 4339. Um, DID stands for Direct Inward Dialing. We'll actually look at it a little more. The short definition is that means somebody in the outside world can dial directly to your phone without going through an operator. Okay, it's what we're used to. When you dial my office phone from out in the world or from your cell phone, you don't have to go through a Murray State operator. It goes directly in my desk. That's a DID number. Okay. okay, so let's walk through this. First off, let's identify what number types we have, what call types we have. Given everything I've told you, Inward. Okay. So what what uh, types of calls do we have on this network? Okay. Tell you what. Let's start looking at site A. Now, now let's go ahead and just talk generally. You're right. Site to site calls and calls within each site. Right. So site A to site A. Side A to side B, side A to side C, et cetera. Okay, what else? 911 calls are their own thing. Long distance is its own thing. Exchange calls that are outside the scope. that's outside of 5100. Right, let calls that aren't assigned to me. Okay. Anything else? I'm sorry? Mm hmm. Long distance, basically, is the way we're thinking about that. Yeah. I, the simplification I've put in here is there's only one exchange in the leg. Okay. Now, I'll talk about that when we start building the rule for those interfaces because there's some things you have to think about. Okay, so we've identified our call types. Now, Let's create a number complete template, but remember, we're doing this on each switch. So if you look at the second page I gave you, I have a little chart that I want you to fill out. The first one, you have site A, site B, and site C in columns. First thing I want to do is let's identify these number complete templates for each site. Okay? So for site A, what number complete templates will we have? Well, we identified calls within that site. 
Okay, I heard 911. Let's do that. So what's our number complete template for 911? 911. This is an exact match, right? There is one pattern we're interested in. 911. What else do we need to add? 9911. Why do I need both of those? Yeah, because I've taught my users to dial out to use 9. We've been taught our entire lives, or most, most of you have, that if, you die, that if you're in trouble, you dial 911. I don't want to have to think about this. So I want both of those to work. Okay. There are times when you may have 911 within a building. You know, some, some enterprises, it's actually discouraged, but some enterprises will actually use 911 within their building to get to their own security and 9911 to get to outside. That's discouraged because if it's a medical call or something, it slows it down. But it is something that you see down occasionally. Okay. What else do we need? What other types of calls do we have? Okay, explain, why, why do we have that? I'm not saying it's wrong. I just want you to explain it to me. Okay, so, so that is a within site A call will be 51XX. Okay, I'm going to annotate these out here. Where else, if you're sitting at site A, where else do you have to call? Okay, site B. So how would we, how would we talk about those calls as a group? Four two, I'm sorry, four two, two three X. Oh 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 oh, I'm sorry. Bracket. Gotcha. If you assume about this on top of my shoulders, you get into trouble. <laughs> okay. Interpret this for me in words. <laughs> yeah, but you do this for a living. <laughs> Four, two, yeah. 4-2 followed by either 2 or 3 followed by a digit. Okay? Yes, you're right. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be site B. Okay. What else do we have? We do. Okay. Let's, let's keep them grouped here. So what else do we have? Site C, 4, 3, 3, X. Okay. Draw a line over here so we can go on. What else do we need? Daniel, you mentioned a couple. Okay, so for the LEC, how would we do it? Four X's, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me ask a question. Is there another way I could do this? Could do nine dash dollar, which would do what? Nine followed by anything. Okay. What else could we do? Yeah, I could do nine two four seven, which is a question I get a lot. This is one of those cases where you kind of have to know the rest of the environment. I have built, built a very simple environment here, and I've said standing in front of you that there is only one exchange out there. So if you build this system and you were to put in 9247XXXX, it'll work. It'll work just fine until they add an exchange. Okay? 247 happens to be Mayfield. Mayfield grows. We get 249. All of a sudden, half your calls don't work. Okay, unless you need that, you just this is one you kind of develop a feel for. Unless you need specificity in this, 
Keep it generic. 9 NXX XXXX specifies a steering digit of 9, North American numbering plan for a 7-digit local call. That's good. This is a steering digit. So what it actually means is when we send this on to the LEC, we're going to delete the 9 and just send NXXXXXX. Okay, we'll talk a little bit. We'll deal with what we do with digits a little more later. Okay, what about IXC? Okay, same thing there. I could actually go in and list specific destinations, and I've actually limited myself to North America here. If you look in most corporate telephone systems, you're going to see more entries for long distance. If you look at the default for our stuff, it comes with more for long for international calls. Um, this will work. Is there any way we could compress? What, what is the purpose of this list, these number complete templates? What do they do? Yeah, they tell the switch when it has enough information to make a routing decision. Do they actually route the calls? No, they don't. We're going to come back to that thought after we finish this. Okay? Okay. So, site B. It's going to look pretty similar. We're going to have nine, we're going to have both of the emergency ones, 911. 9911. Does site B need to call site A? Yeah. Okay. Does site B need to call site B? Yep. So that'll work. So actually, most of the work is in the first one. Two, two, three, X. What about site C? Yep. Okay. Four, three, three, X. We're going to do LEC. <laughs> put my put my hands in motion before my brain was in gear. Sir? I said it depends on the equipment you're using. For these exercises, I want you to go ahead and use this syntax because I want you to get the reason I do that. I know it's longer. I know it's more to write down. The reason I do that is I want you to specifically think what that means. Later on, we'll use a shortcut of 2-3. Actually, the shortcut is inside the brackets, you just do 2-3 because the brackets imply one digit. Right now, I want you to use full stretched out syntax, list every single possibility separated by commas. Okay? And then finally, we have our IXC again. So really very, very much the same sort of things. In fact, we have an identical list. Let's see, 1, N, X, 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 X. Running out like that for the select and IXC. Well, it's the way you have to do it, period. Remember? But you can't do that in a number complete template. You can't use dollar sign. Because what a number complete template is doing is telling it's how do I have enough information to route a call, and I have to specify the number of digits to answer that question. What does dollar sign do? How many digits is the dollar sign? Any number of digits. Dollar sign is a match, but it's a really broad match. It's like saying everybody who breathes on Earth. Okay, well, that matches everybody. It's not male, it's not female, it's not bearded, it's not clean shaven. It's just everybody that draws breath. Right. And in number complete templates, you can't use it because you need the specificity of how many digits you're dialing. Now, I can use it as a routing rule, and we will. Okay? Site C. What do we need? Do we actually need anything different? 
No, we really don't. We have the same list. Now, we're going to come back and visit that comment in a minute, but I want to do some other stuff first. Let me jot these down real quickly so we have them for record for 2, 2, 3, x, site C, 4, 3, 3, x, lec, 9, steering digit, dash, nxx, xxxx. And ixc, 1, nxx, nxx, xxxx. X, X. Okay. Like I said, we're going to come back and look at these in a minute. But this, for, for our first pass through this, this is fine. It's a complete list. You basically have identified emergency calls, on net calls, local calls, and long distance calls, if you wanted to put these in categories. Okay? So, our next step then is to create accept rules on each interface. So why don't we, let's start with the phones first. And the reason I picked the phones is I try, I try to work from simplest routing to most complex routing as I do that. It's, you can't always exactly make that call. But routing a specific four-digit sequence to one interface is about as simple as it gets. Okay. So if I'm assigning the first number in our assigned range to the phone attached to interface B, what am I going to use as an accept rule on interface B? What's the assigned range for that site? For site A. Five one zero zero. We're using four-digit dialing, right? We've, we've defined that. So what, it, what do I put as the accept rule on 5100? Um, I just gave you the answer. Interface B, you turn, if you turn the thinking around, I want all the calls that are going to 5100 to be sent to interface B. So I'm going to put that as the accept rule. In essence, you're building a filter. You're saying only calls with this destination phone number go to this port. Okay. So for interface B, we'll put 5100. If interface C gets the next number, what would I put on it? 5101. Okay. What if I want all the unused numbers to ring on interface B? Five one XX. Remember the rules. It, the switch is going to find all the matches, and then it's going to use the most specific, the best so match. We haven't we haven't dealt with interface A at all yet. No, no, you're making it harder than it is. What, hap what happens in the call? It's a good question, but you're making it harder than it is. What, what happens is you think of the switchboard as sitting in the middle of here, the middle of this switch. Okay? It receives a call. For now, we're just assuming that it's handed a call out of the blue. By default, switches don't care where a call comes from. They care where it's going. I can tell them to care, and we're going to. But by default, they're worried about getting a call where it's going, not worried about where it's come from. Okay? So in that case, the switchboard is just going to accept calls from wherever. Right? So if I call in from this outer interface, the switchboard gets those digits, then follows this. It's going to receive digits until it, makes, until it gets a uh, matches a number complete template, then it's going to route the call. Okay? Now, 
one thing that is probably confusing you. In IP, if I have a system here, say this is a router. We're going to put on our IP hats for a second. If this is a router, what do I do with traffic I don't want here? I discard it, right? In the PSTN world, you don't do that. In the PSTN world, that decision is made here. It's very deterministic. I don't put traffic on this trunk that I don't want to go here. So there's no such thing, really, as discarding a call. Now, I can have a call that can't be delivered. You've all heard that. You ever dialed a number and get a fast busy? That busy, 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 busy is twice as fast as a normal one? It's called a reorder tone. And what it means is, I don't know. <laughs> it actually means a little more than that, but that's the effect of it. Okay. So one of the things you have to get used to is we're sending calls to an interface, we're not rejecting calls going into an interface. We can reject them when an interface initiates a call, which we will here in a minute. But we're not rejecting calls coming into an interface. That's different than IP. In IP, it's perfectly all right to do that. You, you do not reject calls that arrive at an interface. You reject calls, bef you don't reject calls sending them to an interface, you reject calls when they come out of an interface. We'll look at that here in a second. Okay. So that gets us interface B and C. What if we decide on interface B if I want all of the unused numbers numbers I haven't specifically assigned to another interface to ring on interface B. 51XX, what happens when I dial 5119? What's the, what's the process? 5119 matches my number complete template so I can make a routing decision. I'm going to look at the accept rules and I'm going to get all the matches. Well, 5119, if we haven't assigned it to a particular interface, won't have an exact match. But it will match 51XX, and so I'll go ahead and send the call there. The nice thing about that is it's automatic. If I assign 5119, then that's a more specific match, and it'll go wherever I assign it. Okay? Ow. Okay. So now we've dealt with calls within site A. Let's deal with, eh, let's deal with our 911 and LEC calls first. Where do I want 911 and 9911 calls to go? I'm sorry? Yeah, the LEC interface, which is interface A. So what am I going to do for accept rules on interface A? Since I want these two to specifically route every single time, I'm going to put 911 as an accept rule. I'm going to put another accept rule that is 9911, and those will route just fine. What about calls to the LEC that are not assigned in my range? In other words, everything in the 247 range except what's assigned to me. How do I deal with that? Right. 9, NXX, XXXX will do that. Okay. Would 247 work? Yes. Given the restriction I said earlier about the number complete template, it will work. If they add another exchange, it'll stop. Calls to the new exchange won't work. Okay, so go ahead and use the generic. What else do we want to go out interface A? Long distance calls. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, so in other words, interface A is going to end up with four accept rules on it 911, 9911, 9NXX, XXXX, and one 
and XX and XX, XXXX. X, 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 X. All of those patterns that we're going to send to the public switch telephone network. Notice that that's accepting calls leaving my switch. I'm not saying what I'm accepting coming in. That's what I was meaning about you don't reject calls. We decide what comes into this interface by what we put into that interface. Remember, this is designed on a circuit switch world. Remember, we're sticking with the PSTN view of this for a little bit. So I decide what's going here by what I put in up here. It's a very deterministic model. It was owned by one company, mostly. Okay. That's something you have to get used to. And IP? IP is IP. We can do all the tricks you know in IP. So yes, I can reject calls. In fact, it's sometimes hard to get calls to go where we want them to <laughs> around that. Okay. What else do we have to do at side A? Yeah, we haven't dealt with calling the other sites yet. So how do we go about doing that? What interface do we use? Okay, interface D, and what what accept rules are we going to put on interface D? So we want to specifically define those ranges exactly, right? So we don't want to preclude being able to dial something somewhere else. So we're going to use exactly those ranges. 42 bracket 23x, 433x. Okay. Let me stop here and take a look for a second. Is there any way I could shorten this list a bit? Is there anything that's a little unnecessary? Or maybe we could do another way that would save us some entry and trouble? Well, if I'm looking at these as call types, these two we want to route specifically, so they stay. Okay. If I look at site B and site C, what's common between all of those? Now I'll start with four. Does anything at site A start with four? Could I, would it work for a number complete template if I replaced these two with 4XXX. X, X. Yeah, it would. And it makes it a little easier to chase through and see what's going on. Because basically what you're saying is switch as you're going through your list. If it begins with 4, it goes out this interface. What the switch is going to do is go through this list in order. When it finds a match, it stops looking. Now, that's a detail we'll deal with in the lab. And it's why I insisted on doing 911 first, because I want that to be the first number evaluated. Okay. We're not really talking about processing speed. You can argue that you're talking processor loading. Come on, you know, even a cheap processor now is going to sleep. <laughs> five nines of the time going on here. You know, it's just not going to be a load on it. But when you design a system, you have to think. Your, your mindset has to be you're building something that somebody behind you is going to have to come in and understand. So you want to be as consistent and you want to be as concise as you can be. You certainly need to do your job and break out calls. But I don't need if I can combine two of these entries for the purpose of saying, yes, that's enough information to make a routing decision, then I'm fine. Okay. So I actually could replace in our list here, I could actually replace those two with 4XXX. X, X. Okay. We're going to come back to that thought in a minute.
Say that again, I'm sorry. Um, interface B and site A, when you're talking about the warrant, everything the ring that wasn't assigned on, on B, was 5-1 asset something that's supposed to be part of the dialing plan, or is that something we're talking about? What, what, what calls, looking at this list, what calls need to go out interface D? Do I have, let me ask the question another way. Do I have to, for calls that originate at site A and end at site A, do I have to send those calls to interface D? No. So I don't have to put that on there. Remember all, I know this is confusing. That's why I'm, that's why I'm kind of letting it sink in a little bit before, <laughs> before we move on. Number complete templates only tell the switch when it has enough information to make a routing decision. These do not route traffic. Okay, then why aren't we using XXXX? What does XXXX match? XXXX matches any four digits. So if I dial 9911, that'll work. If I dial 1502, it'll route immediately because I've matched the template. Remember, this is, you have enough information, now make a routing decision. So if I put XXXX in here, what I'm saying is, whenever four digits enter this switch, make a routing decision. Yes, you could. Yes, you, cer you certainly could. And in fact, that would be a good thing to do over here. If I... S yeah. Sen since the number complete template is saying, <laughs> think of its name, this number is now complete, make a decision. If I put XXXX, the first four digits of anything I dial are going to match. Yes, it will match everything in my four-digit plan. The problem is I can't dial any more than four digits. The minute, <laughs> the instant I put that fourth digit in, I've made a routing decision. I've just negated anything longer than that. Yeah. On the other hand, this is not routing calls. This is saying you have enough information to route a call. So let me put this in a different light. For its job in the routing process, 4XXX is saying you have received 4 followed by 3 other digits. Make a decision. Now we're going to look for all the interfaces that have 4 digit numbers starting with 4. And I'm going to pick the one that matches the best. Okay? This does not route. This tells you you've got enough information to make a routing decision. The fact that they use the same syntax is confusing. <laughs> Typically, you want to make these as general as possible, but still be able to separate your call types. It's fine. So what happens when I dial a number that doesn't exist on the system? You're going to get a fast busy or whatever your system does for an unroutable number. Most of them will give you some form of a reorder tone. Like I say, I'm, I'm willing to stay here for a while to get this clear. But understand, this is not routing. And it's okay to try to route call, using your example, it's okay to try to route a call that doesn't, to a destination that doesn't exist. I'm not going to be able to do it successfully. But from a switching point of view, it's okay to try. But if you have XXXX and it's a 1502 or something like mm -hmm. that, that's not routable, it'll still drop. Say that again. If you do XXXX and you okay. understand it's a 1502, so I have XXXX as a number complete template. Right. Okay. You, you said 1502, it really doesn't matter. It's a long distance call. Right. If it's a legitimate long distance call, that would be routable. Yes, but it's going to try to route using only 1502. I'm not going to get the rest of the number. Once I match this pattern, 
I stop listening to digits. I'll never get the exchange code and the other four digits. I just get this. that this will never see because it's already matched XXXX up here. Hmm. Hold that thought. <laughs> You're right in what you've seen. Okay? I know this is confusing. Okay, so let's move on. Realizing that what, now that we've had the discussion, part of the criteria I'm going to put here is we're going to put as much here as we have to to separate our calls. Excuse me. We're going to make sure 911 and 9911 always route. But I'm not going to be any more specific here than I have to to actually specify my call types. That's actually why I listed this this way. I want you to think about what these, what the different types of calls, and that's not a term you're going to see in anybody's textbook. That's me standing around here waving my arms. But I want you to think about, if I'm sitting at site A, what types of calls do I have? Well, I have calls that stay here. I have calls that go elsewhere on my private network. I have calls that go to my local exchange. I have calls that go somewhere else in the world. All of those are okay. And I have my emergency calls. That's the way I'm wanting you to think. Then write your rules here. The only purpose this has is to just say you've received enough information to route the call. I don't have to do all of my routing. I can't do my routing here. This doesn't route. This is just now make a routing decision. It has to be specific enough that you know your routing rules will get it there which is the problem with XXXX, it's too general. Nah, the mouth isn't working. It's too general. XXXX is a perfectly legitimate pattern, but it matches four digits, period. Okay? So how do we do the uh, eject rule? Let me see what the time is because I want, I want to be... Okay. Let's hold it there. We'll pick it up here on Friday. I know you want to do the reject rule, but I want to do it in the order I want to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Let me leave you. Okay, the question came up right at the end, but it came up. I want you to think about something between now and Friday where we're going to pick up on this question. Where, what's the role of dollar sign in this dial plan? There's, there, there are a couple of good places for it. No. Uh, yes, we are, actually. Okay, thanks. Yeah, they just have to be in a week after you miss. Well, I didn't have internet, I didn't have power. I understand. <laughs>